Welcome to another edition of RCE. Again, this is Brock Palin. You can find us online, subscribe to the podcast, RSS feed, and all that other fun stuff at rce-cast.com. Uh, also, if you could leave us a review on iTunes, that definitely helps for getting the word out for other people who may be interested in the kind of material that we offer. Uh, also, iTunes only shows a certain number of back episodes. The entire back catalog is available at the website. So again, that's rce-cast.com. Uh, today I'm flying solo, actually, so to, we're going to roll right into our guest. Today we're going to be talking about Elmer, which is a suite of scientific tools. Um, and so I have with us uh, three developers of Elmer. So guys, why don't you go ahead and state your name and give us a little bit of background. Okay, hello, my name is Peter Robak. I'm uh, developing Elmer since 2001. I'm a physicist in background and Let's say my special interest lies in solution of multiphysical problems, and there I have made most of the contributions. Uh, Hello, too. My name is Thomas Zwinger. Um, My background is uh, physics and mechanical engineering. I work here at CSC as a senior application scientist, and I mainly do applications of ELMA either in microfluidics or in geophysical problems uh, mainly in ice sheet, glacier flows, and uh, micro-meteorology. Hello, uh, my name is Mikko Bückling. Uh, I'm an application specialist here at, at CSC. I've been working with, with Elmer for, for a couple of years now. Uh, my background is from computer science and from mathematics. And uh, so like my specialty is, is numerics and, and HPC in general. So. I'm more of like a like a helper for the for the physicist here. So, uh, real quick before we go into Elmer, um, where and what exactly is CSC for people who don't know? Well, CSC is sort of the national supercomputing center in Finland, and we have lots of adult, adult activities as well. But from maybe your audience, this is the main activity, and and then Elmer software is then a natural companion to this uh, supercomputing activity. Okay, so can you give us a little bit of overview? What exactly would you say Elmer is? Well, uh, I would say that Elmer is a multiphysical finite element software suit. It comprises of several parts. So we have a solver, we have the GUI, and even a post-processor. Uh, and it's both for end users, but you can only use it, also use it as a library if you are developing your own models. So how exactly, give us a history, how did you guys get started down this path of making this package? Um, also there's a number of other you know solvers out there. Why did Elmer get started? Uh, Elmer actually got started in 1995 as a part of a Finnish national program in computational fluid dynamics and uh, at that time, there wasn't really open source tools available, so uh, so it, it served then a special purpose uh, nationally. But uh, later, then we went open source. So maybe my colleagues can can contribute. Oh, well, I, I step in. So um, uh, the open source step was done in two thousand five, where it was uh, released under. The GNU public license 2, so yeah, officially the release was GNU public license 2 or later. Uh, in 2012, if I recall correctly, we made a small adjustment to that, that in that sense that the Elmer Solver library, so the, the Solver suit itself was published under the uh, LGPL, such that commercial uh, uh, codes or, or applications could plug into it. Um, one major step in between, I think we should uh, mention, was that in 2008 we added the Elma GUI, so the graphical user interface, which is based on a Qt library, uh, to the package. Uh, it was a step taken in order to make it more popular, more easier to use uh, for beginners, so to increase the, the learning, uh, the learning effect with Elma. And uh, from my point of view, personally. I want to add 2012, where we officially established the Elma Ice package, which is an add-on package for a package for a huge scientific community, 
uh, of ELMA, the glaciologically uh, induced, uh, inclined community, uh, which deals with the simulation of ice sheets and glaciers, which is very, very important for, for climate research nowadays. So you mentioned there's a library in a GUI. Um, do you have your own language in the GUI? Or how, how exactly does one kind of program the GUI? Well, the GUI is, is quite lean, so it's uh, maybe 20,000 lines of C++, and uh, uh, it's programmable, programmable in the way that you can define the menus using XML files, but uh, Elmer doesn't really try to be something like free friend plus plus or any code where you could sort of write down your own equations. So you have to sort of still do a little bit of programming if you want your own equations put in. Okay, and then Elmer itself, what's the primary language that the, uh, probably the primary library and solver is written in? Well, well most of the packages or the or the internal internals are, are written in Fortran ninety or or later, and uh, then with with some added C parts due to some legacy code, ma mainly and mostly because at the by, at the time that the software was written, uh, you couldn't really load shared objects with with Fortran, so there there are some C layers there for for load for doing these things, and. This was for the for the solver part and and for the for the GUI part. That's just C plus plus, mostly. Okay, so if I'm uh, developing an application, I want to use a routine from the Elmer library. Um, am I restricted kind of in the languages I can call it as, or are there bindings for things like Python or other you know higher level languages or alternative languages to Fortran? Well, currently we don't have an API for for calling calling the routines from anywhere else than than Fortran, but this could be quite easily actually added. With just with we are actually now now doing the now now doing the ISO C bindings for generally it's like just cleaning up the code and doing using ISO C bindings there. So you could actually quite easily add add ISO C bindings for just for, for external calls from, from C or from, from Python. Um, if I may, may add to that, so there is an internally developed uh, language, if you want to say so. so it's called MATC, uh, uh, which enables in the solver input files, so in those files who define the runs, uh, to uh, program simple mathematical context there. Not uh, much difficult things. Uh, if things get a little bit more difficult, uh, we recommend that you start writing a Fortran routine, which very easily can be dynamically linked to the system. Okay, so in terms of the actual programming model, is this code parallel capable? Is it serial only? Is it MPI capable? What's what's kind of the focus of the type of solvers it has? Well, um, the, I, I could say that mostly the the parallelism comes from from MPI, so it's a so it's a distributed memory code in that sense. Uh, lately, a lot of threading features have, have been added with OpenMP to the code, but that's still in development. So, so it's mostly MPI. Are those uh, threaded features meant to do like hybrid mode using threads on multi-core processors and also combining it with MPI, or is it currently kind of one or the other? Well, our, our target is hybrid. So something that probably slides in here, uh, is there any work to enable the use of accelerators, you know, GP, GPUs, uh, OpenCL, uh, Xeon Phi, anything like that with Elmer? Uh, currently, Elmer cannot really uh, use any GPUs or, or accelerators. But uh, as for as for Xeon files, we have actually ongoing work with this, and uh, actually CSC just just recently a week this was made official a week ago. We joined the Intel Parallel Computing Center program. So within this program, our our target is to optimize 
optimize Elmer for 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 Xeons and and enable usage on on Xeon, Xeon files. So a lot of work will be done in regards to this this particular point. Okay, so let's shift gears a little bit and let's talk about the type of science that Elmer actually focuses to solve. Uh, you mentioned a couple. Can you give us a couple more examples of how Elmer's being used and the types of problems that the library aims to solve? Um, yes, so, uh, Elmer is suitable in solving all kinds of partial differential equations, but of course most of them come from the field of computational engineering. So we have fluid mechanics, we have solid mechanics and computational electromagnetics and heat transfer. So these are the main fields. But there is even some quantum mechanics and uh, more, let's say, seldom, seldomly used fields. So. so how hard is it to extend Elmer, though? Is it, does it have some sort of plug-in architecture or something like that? Like, say it does a lot of what I want to do, but like my background is nuclear engineering, and if I want to add more quantum-type behavior to Elmer, how would one go about doing that? Well, if your problem can be described by a partial differential equation, then it's quite simple. So there are existing examples how to write your own PDE and let's say a generic uh, advection diffusion reaction equation would be maybe 100 lines of code. So you can uh, start from that and write your own equation and uh, and hopefully get a tailored solution. Uh, if your problem is not a partial differential equation, then it could, of course, be much a much bigger job. But uh, let's say standard problems are quite easy. But of course, difficult problems tend to be always difficult. So, what packages that people might be more familiar with, or you know, run across that Elmer would maybe compare to as an as an alternative uh, to be explored? You know, there's other PDE libraries out there. There's Petsy, Trilinos, and a number of others. Uh, and there's commercial applications like Comsol and others. Uh, how how would you say Elmer fits among these in the landscape? Would you say they're complementary competitors? Uh, solve similar types of problems with a simpler, higher level language for certain types of science. What's what's kind of the focus? Okay, so if I compare to other finite element libraries like Deal Two or or uh, LibMesh Plus Plus, then I would say that those are more oriented for developers. So Elmer is also an uh, end-user program. Uh, and on the other hand, Elmer is written in Fortran 90 and newer, let's say, dialects. So, so they have a little bit different target audience as developers go because people tend to prefer either of the languages. Uh, then if one looks at competition in among software, then I'd say that, for instance, instance OpenFORM is uh, complementary in the way that Elmer is not that uh, much used in high Reynolds number flows, but Elmer then takes, uh, uh, let's say, the lower regime of the Reynolds number, let's say, more easily. And and if we compare it to console multiphysics, then of course, their console is much nicer to use, but we have some advantage, for instance, in the parallel computing. So I don't may maybe want to uh, see the commercial software as direct competitors. It's sort of you either choose the open source or the commercial sort of route, and then you choose your tools according to that. Okay, so Elmer has a high-level language um, and also lets programmers think in a little bit higher level constructs and some of these other libraries. But Elmer itself does provide a library. So what are some packages out there that can use Elmer under the covers for doing solving or um, you know, optionally use Elmer? Well, I don't think there are other programs, at least not that well-known ones that use Elmer. So it's the other way around that we tend to use many of the uh, libraries under linear algebra, but but uh, 
Nightmare maybe is primarily it, it's an end user, let's say, software that is easily extendable with new equations. It's maybe not ideally a library that you would uh, plug in under your hood in a, let's say, other software. So, so we have a little bit different profile than some libraries. Okay, you mentioned that Elmer uses some libraries itself. What are some of the things that Elmer leverages to uh, you know, provide performance, ease of use, code reuse, things like that? Um, could you explain in more detail? I mean, what are you in particular interested to? Uh, I more want to know what tools or, well, I don't want to get into tools so much quite yet, but I want to know what software you guys leverage so you don't have to write as much. Um, yeah, I, I got the point, yeah, sorry. Yeah, so basically external libraries, we plug into a lot of them. Um, so the most prominent and uh, actually uh, essential, so we cannot run the code without it, are uh, the LAPAC Plus and UMFPAC, uh, and we ship them actually with the source code uh, in order to make sure that uh, if you compile it from scratch that it's included. And uh, if we go to the uh, parallel computing side uh, on an optional basis you can uh, include uh, uh, Hypre, uh, MUMS. MUMS is a, a, a very versatile uh, parallel direct solver. Trilinos, uh, SuperLU and uh, Bardiso, uh, whereas Bardiso is uh, more for the multi-threading. Um, in special applications like the, the, the ICE the classological applications, we also have uh, some solvers with inter interfaces to NetCDF, which is the common standard of uh, input-output uh, for uh, climate-related uh, problems. And uh, if we turn to the post processors, there is a leg legacy post processor, which is called Elmer Post, which is not further developed from our side, but that one relies on TCLDK, so quite old stuff. And uh, the newer post-processor that is included, embedded in uh, the Elmer graphical user interface, Elmer GUI, is based on uh, VTK and the QWT. Uh, so this is basically uh, the, uh, the whole range of external libraries we link into. Of course, I have to mention also QT or Qt itself, uh, which the Elmer GUI relies on. If I may add, may, may add to the to the uh, post processing, so we consider nowadays Paraview as the good tool for doing the post processing. So basically, uh, giving this away out of our hands, Paraview is a very versatile open source tool uh, which uh, reads in the BTK output, which Elma is capable of writing. Oh, okay. So you've moved to using kind of like the standard VTK file formats, and so anything that can handle VTK files, pair view, visit others, um, would be able to be used as a post processor with Elmer. Uh, yes, uh, I maybe should emphasize that we use the the XML based uh, newer version of the VTK format, so and it's used in binary, so it's rather compact compared to that let's say, previous ASCII version of the VTK format that we had a few years ago. Okay, so you have a GUI, but you also have MPI, and you work in HPC Center. Um, I assume you can run the Elmer solver without the GUI, so it supports batch environments just fine? Yes. Okay, so what's what do you see a scientist's normal workflow who's using Elmer would be like from beginning to end? What would be the like those of you who are the physicists on the call? How do you use this to solve real science? Yeah, maybe I jump in. So I have a, a lot of experience, a lot of experience within these uh, glaciological applications, namely ice sheet glaciers. So what we usually do is uh, meshing with open source. Uh, software like uh, GMSH, it's a very good uh, software for getting uh, uh, meshes, uh, unstructured meshes. Um, some colleagues from France then used also a program which is called YAMS, 
for the redistributing adaptation of these meshes. Uh, it, it takes in input from, for instance, uh, satellite surface velocity data of, of ice sheets in order to uh, identify the areas where by higher shear rates it would need higher uh, mesh resolution. And uh, then we do a lot of meshing actually. We go from footprints to 3D within ELMA, so there's a capability of a parallel meshing of already partitioned meshes. So we, we base, ELMA is based on the domain of decomposition, so each, uh, each uh, separate process is running on a, a separate domain. So if you, if you can uh, avoid uh, uh, partitioning in 3D, which we do, then you have a real uh, advantage to uh, avoid that bottleneck in, in parallel computing, and that's what we do. We basically uh, vertically extrude our meshes, if it's possible, uh, already on the, on the amount of processor cores we are using. So that's on the, on the, on the pre-processing side. And on the post-processing side, basically, we already explained, you can power few, which uh, uh, you can use power few, which also can be used in parallel mode if you want to, if you have larger systems uh, to uh, post-process. And Elma itself, of course, it's completely running in parallel. So that's basically the workflow. So you start building your geometry uh, and also the meshing with, uh, uh, with uh, open source like uh, GMSH, eventually refine it with another program, read it in into Elma, and post-process with uh, PowerView. Um, does Elmer have any type of capability to do, say, AMR, um, adaptive meshing, such that, say, you have crack propagation or something like that and you want to refine around that region? Can, can it do that? And if so, how does it handle load balancing? Uh, well, unfortunately, we can do adaptivity, but uh, we cannot handle load balancing. So adaptivity was... Uh, development in Elmer more, let's say, about 10 years ago. And uh, we sort of got stuck into the load balancing. So, uh, so we, we didn't have the resources to continue the development of the, let's say, parallel adaptivity approach. So, so I must say that in that respect, Elmer is not, let's say, among the most spectacular software. So our adaptivity is purely serial at the moment. Okay, and then in terms of mesh formats, you mentioned uh, GMSH, which I'm going to have to track down myself. But uh, what kind of, I assume Elmer as a library has the ability to read different common mesh formats. What do you say some of the most common ones are? Well, as I said, GMSH has its own mesh format. Uh, we support also the universal mesh format, for instance, which is written by Salome package and then we try to support also mesh formats so certain commercial packages but there we often see that the commercial mesh formats they are not uh, it's not, not easy to find specifications on the format so we have to often guess a little bit how the format is built so for instance we have we can read in uh, meshes from console multiphysics uh, from uh, some older version of Gambit and uh, so on, but uh, sometimes meshing, getting the meshes out of commercial codes may be quite frustrating. So in terms of community involvement though, so, so say I wanted to add a, a mesh format or something like that, uh, do you see a lot of that? Do you see a lot of community contribution to Elmer or is there kind of like a core group with maybe patches around the edges? I would say more of the latter, so we maybe code ourselves 90% of the features. But that was a good example. Uh, uh, the, let's say, different uh, mesh formats, they, they have had some contributions. So, for instance, yesterday I got in a patch that uh, implemented some new elements to the, um, to the console multiphysics mesh reader. So, yes, we do get get some contributions, but of course not as much, much as we would like to get them. And we are very happy to get, get those, so we are agile and try to, let's say, get 
all the contributions that we, we get, we try to also to incorporate them into the official version. So what's the community actually look like? Is there a mailing list, a forum? How Basically, how can people get involved with this? Yes, there is a, there's a discussion forum. It has more than 1,000 uh, members and there is some active discussions. It could be even more active, but, but uh, you can find pretty much on every topic some discussions if you look at the search features. Um, so we also have a wiki uh, where actually if uh, people ask for being switched free uh, can act act actively uh, contribute also. Um, for the uh, glaciological community especially, which I already mentioned is the largest scientific community using ELMA, uh, we have a special portal of uh, which is called Elma Ice portal uh, where they can have uh, tips and, and, and contacts and also news related to this very specific scientific field and uh, also on that side for that community we have we are running a, a, a mailing list so where we can broadcast uh, new developments uh, meetings etc I could also add that we have a group in LinkedIn so which includes maybe 250 members currently. So, so we try to be active in many, many different fields. So. Okay, so channeling Jeff here since he couldn't be here today. Um, what You already mentioned that Elmer's licensed under GPL v2. So what code con revision system do you use and why? Well, uh, cu currently, what is in use is is SVN from from SourceForge. Uh, that's mainly, I think that that's mainly for historical reasons. Source, SourceForge was just picked up as a as a possible place to to put the code. We are now considering moving moving to to using JIT, but uh, uh, that's just a thought currently. So it's not not set in stone if we will make the switch or not. Okay, so how far can Elmer scale? Like, what's the largest problem either in Elements or CPUs ran um, that's been solved with Elmer? Um, well, the final element assembly, it scales always ideally, so so that is not a bottleneck, but the bottleneck is in solving the linear systems that result from the final element assembly, and there, the type of equation uh, well, then dictates quite a lot how well we can we can scale. Uh, we have demonstrated scalability, for instance, up to 6,000 cores using FETI, which is the finite element tier and interconnect method, quite suitable for elasticity problems, for instance. But uh, I would say that we can scale up to thousands in many fields, but you have to have a big problem if you want to running thousands of cores, so uh, maybe at least 10,000 or 50,000 degrees of freedom for each each uh, core. So if you want to run with 5,000 cores, you better have a problem which has um, uh, some hundreds of millions unknowns in it. So. Okay, so what future features are coming to Elmer? Yes, so currently we are working quite active, actively in computational electromagnetics. So we recently uh, implemented a new type of element, an edge element that can can also be distorted. So it can be, uh, well, you can provide on... Uh, but maybe, maybe I give this to you because... <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I think that what Peter is trying to say is that mathematically the mapping doesn't have to be affine from the from the from the reference element to to the to the actual element. So that's what you're trying yes. to say. Yes, and uh, this opens, let's say, new fields in computational electromagnetics because this element is quite rare. I think I don't think there are many open source tools that has this feature, for example. 
Also recently we have added features for, uh, for gluing, let's say, boundary conditions, even if they are non-conforming, they may be rotating. And, um, and also I think one important feature that we are hope to see in the near future is, is new features in the multi-threading, so maybe Mikko can say more on yeah, I mean, I, I think that I mentioned this before, but but we're we're really looking into into hybridizing the code and and exploiting Xeon files, for instance, on so like as either as as native native code processors or or as offload devices for for some key parts of the code. And uh, actually, related to this uh, this development due to difficulties in, in cross compiling with the old build system we are making making a switch from the old uh, automake based build system to to cmake and this will happen in the near near future yeah from the geophysical application side uh, there are the tracing of uh, uh, of uh, some quantities within the systems, for instance, pollution in glaciers or, or flows in general, um, or uh, also the uh, estimation of age of uh, ice layers, for instance. Uh, so these are purely convective type of equations, very nasty to solve actually with uh, uh, the Galerkin method, or impossible partly. Uh, we have a discontinuous Galerkin solver, which is already implemented, but uh, I would say it's still on a beta level. Uh, but uh, some person from British Antarctic Survey uh, contributed with a similar Grangian solver, which I hope sooner or later will make it in the distribution. And that would be a very nice tool for those kind of applications. Okay, guys. Well, thank you very much for your time. What are the coordinates for finding Elmer, downloading the code, and generally just what what's the website? <laughs> well, you can find it under the CSC homepages. So that would be www.csc.fi/elmer. Or if you want to come to the what I would call a general home base of Elma, it would be just uh, elmafem.org, where you find basically all the links to the relevant pages around Elma, including uh, the special scientific community applications. Okay, so elmafem.org. Elmafem.org, affirmative, yeah. Okay, guys, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.